Hi, I'm Josefina Estrada from Purdue University, bringing you a Boiler Bite story about drones on campus. Initially developed by the military, these drones, or unmanned aerial vehicles, UAVs, are becoming more popular in the civilian sector. This high-flying technology has also found its way into the classroom and research projects here at Purdue. FAA refers to it as an unmanned aerial system or a UAS. There's also a uh, unmanned aerial vehicle, which is the actual aircraft itself. Uh, much of the technology was developed through DARPA and the military, much of the technology. Some of the technology also came from the civilian side, such as uh, cell phones, the IMUs or the motion measuring capability of a cell phone, the cameras that are in cell phones, those are all civilian applications that, that are applied directly to, uh, to drone or, or as I prefer to say, unmanned aerial system or unmanned aerial vehicle. The class that I'm teaching is unmanned aerial systems and it's an introduction to the uh, latest technology in unmanned aircraft. So we cover everything from manual flight to, uh, to really to fully autonomous flight. And I think a lot of people get involved with it thinking that it is a, a hobby or something that's, that can be casually done. But as soon as you get into GPS guided autonomous flight, it gets very demanding on the, uh, on the knowledge base. There's a broad range of vehicles, toy quality for training and that sort of thing. It moves from there to you have a choice of fixed wing or multi-rotor or helicopter. Every day I see new applications for this and new ideas where people are using the, uh, using the technology. Precision agriculture, where they're taking aerial photographs and analyzing those photographs for uh, determining the health of plants and, and uh, crops. The project this spring was to fly on a weekly basis uh, over one set of soybean fields so that we could monitor the rate at which the canopy closes, so how rapidly the plants are developing and closing up the, the gap areas between the rows. The sort of why we're doing it is to find traits that are associated with yield. The interest in UAVs was to get higher resolution and to fly more often than we can do with a satellite. A satellite is measuring a large area, like a couple of counties or a state. Um, the drone is a close range remote sensing, so it's measuring a few acres. If the flight is working correctly, then it is hand launched. You will have given it a bounding box on the ground that you want pictures in. Once it has reached altitude and identified the wind speed, it will come up with the best or most efficient flight plan to cover that based on wind speed. And at that point, it will fly the mission. The UAVs are enabling us to capture data in, say, 10 minutes sort of instantaneously on everything all at once, as opposed to you know, spending a couple of days on foot walking through collecting those same data. We are taking stills, we're taking a lot of overlapping pictures because we need to get the resolution that we're, that we're interested in. The biggest challenge right now is the image analysis. And we have maybe 600 images and they have to be mosaiced together and it's all geo-referenced. And they're not just images, they're maps actually. So each pixel has GPS coordinates associated with it. And then that image has to be analyzed with a computer and broken down into 6,400 different distinct units. So I think we have a fairly unique data set and, and our ability to work with Dr. Rainey, who knows the genetic side of the soybean, is, is something that puts Purdue in a, in a very enviable place. We've had this sort of problem of how do we capture the scale of excavations that we've been doing for the past, you know, 15 years. I do my research on the late Bronze Age in Armenia, so around 1500 BC to around 1000 BC. So we are in the, in the highlands of Armenia, about 6,000 feet in elevation. Um, it's really rocky, it's really mountainous, uh, and there are people who are building these hilltop fortresses. And we've been excavating there for about 15 years, and so we've opened a lot of, of uh, space. But we haven't really been able to sort of capture uh, the scale of the excavations and really sort of see how architecture that we've exposed kind of articulates together. The new drone technologies with uh, really high resolution cameras give you that nice intermediate space for really capturing the kind of scale of excavations that we're working on. The video is just absolutely fantastic. I mean, it's, it's full high def, and, and so the, the quality of it is, is really, um, really spectacular. 
but also we can plug it into a geographic information system to see how the architecture articulates in space and, and get really precise maps. It'll save time, it saves money, it's more efficient um, in terms of not just capturing, capturing images but also surveying areas that we don't want, necessarily want to send people up the steep crags of the mountains you know, to, to look for sites. We can use these new technologies to do that for us. You can sort of describe these sites archaeologically of what a late Bronze Age fortress looks like, but it, it does kind of take a, a lot of imagination if you can't actually show people what these sites look like. You know, having fly-throughs with a drone really sort of captures the imagination. Also using them in the classroom, of course, I'm going to incorporate them in my archaeology classes. Really gets the imagination stirring, um, and you can really sort of get a visceral sense of what archaeology is like and what the ancient past was like as well. I looked online and, and very quickly came up with over 200 uh, civilian uses for unmanned aircraft. There's added uh, uh, uses every day. Every day somebody thinks of something um, that, can, that these can be used for on the civilian side. As soon as FAA uh, issues the new regulations covering this, you'll see a, a real blooming of uh, pilot operator training being needed and the people that actually make a living in the, the uh, unmanned aviation industry are going to be just like the pilots and the mechanics of, of the manned industry. You'll go to work, you'll work on an airplane, only you'll be going to a, an unmanned facility of some kind and, and operating an unmanned vehicle of some sort. Because of the increased interest in the rapidly growing private industry, the Department of Aviation Technology is planning to expand course offerings in unmanned aerial systems. That wraps up another Boiler Bites. Be sure to check us out online at BoilerBites.com. We'll see you next time.